Hello students, welcome to the lecture on e-commerce and banking and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand about e-commerce for banks, discuss about requirements and opportunities for payment system, understand the correspondent banking, explain the electronic data interchange ETI, discuss the electronic payment system, explain automated telemachine ATM, understand electronic payment and online electronic payment. Let's start with a brief introduction. Many companies are embracing e-commerce or business conducted online over computer networks as a means of expanding markets, improving customer service, reducing costs and enhancing productivity. Companies have traditionally used computers to manage their product and customer data. E-banking developed and evolved rapidly during the last 10 years. IT innovation like web commerce and secure information exchanges have been a triggering factor for e-banking appearance. These IT factors continue to bring pressure to e-banking development. The internet will make banking a much more competitive environment in the next years to come. Since the internet is not constrained by geography, banks have to compete with national and multinational banks and companies for consumer located anywhere in the world. Let's look at how Brian would have to pay back Alex in the traditional way of doing things. Brian is sitting in the kitchen, reading the mail he has received today. He receives a letter from Alex explaining him that he needs to pay him back the hundredth franc that he lent him last month. Brian gets in his car and drives to the nearest bank in the city. When he arrives at the bank, he has to speak to the banker who will help him to do the transfer. Brian will have to prove his identity give his account number and Alex's account number. The banker will then take a few minutes to verify all the information and do the actual transfer. Brian can then go back to his house. The whole process will have lasted 30 minutes. That is if he had luck with the traffic, found an easily a parking spot, and if the banker was competent. In the next part, we're going to explain the modern way of doing bank transfers. With new technology, Brian does not need to move. He can make all his transactions from home. Brian receives a message from Alex saying that he has to reimburse him. Now the whole process will be done from a computer. Brian takes his computer and goes on his bank's internet platform. He will have to log in and he will be asked to enter his username and his password. For security reasons, his bank will send him a code by SMS that he must enter to identify himself. By doing this, they prevent criminals from hacking their account. He can directly enter Alex's account number and the amount he needs to pay. Now, a single mouse click is enough to confirm the payment. Eventually, he receives a confirmation that the payment will be effective in the next business day. The whole process has been completed in less than five minutes. Alex, no matter where he is located, receives a message indicating that the amount has been transferred to his bank account. Let us now discuss e-commerce for banks. E-commerce is a commercial activity dealing directly with the trading of goods and services and with other related business activities in which the electronic communication medium plays a central role. These activities include the communication of information, the management of payment, the negotiating and trading of financial instruments and the management of transport. E-commerce is a part of e-business and its goal is to generate profit through the various set of activities based on buying and selling principles. Banks changing response to e-commerce. A review of the banking industry's response to online commerce suggests that even as recently as five years ago, banks' involvement with the internet was quite limited. A bank might set up a website to provide consumers with information about its services. Actual banking transaction, however, still took place at the branch through the mail, by telephone or over the automated telemachine ATM network. Development of e-commerce products. Banks are designing and deploying a range of new e-commerce products. If the product proves successful, the basic business mix of banking is likely to change. Banks may increasingly function as facilitations of online commerce and see a decline in their long-standing role as financial intermediaries. Establishing Internet Portals A number of banks are planning to participate in special internet portals, super sites, 
where many sellers will display their product offerings and large numbers of buyers will visit. Some of these portals will feature a broad range of financial and non-financial product offerings. Others will limit their offerings to financial services. Verifying Identities Banks are also planning to offer a product that would protect e-commerce participants against fraud arising from the misrepresentation of identities. Using encryption technology, each bank would certify the identities of its own account holders and serve as the intermediary through which its account holders could verify the identities of account holders at other banks. In this way, both sides of an e-commerce transaction would have some assurance that they were not dealing with an imposter. Assisting small business entries into e-commerce Another effort being undertaken by some banks involves helping smaller firms set up the infrastructure, interactive website and payment capabilities for engaging in e-commerce. Electronic billing. Electronic bill presentment and collection services are being developed as an enhancement to the existing cash management and remittance processing services offered by banks to large companies that send out substantial volumes of recurring bills. Facilitating business to business e commerce. A few of the largest commercial banks have begun to offer firms the technology for electronic business to business commerce. These banks are essentially undertaking to automate the entire information flow associated with the procurement and distribution of goods and services among business. Issuing electronic money and electronic checks. Two e-commerce products still in the planning stage are electronic money and electronic checks. As more computers become equipped with smart card readers, banks are considering issuing electronic money that could be stored on these cards and spent over the internet. Integrating the ATM and internet networks Some technology companies and a banking technology group are exploring the feasibility of allowing access to the internet and to bank websites from ATMs. Risk Implication Although banks stand to gain from e-commerce involvement, they will also face some significant new risk. Some of these risks are strategic. Strategic risk e-commerce will surely transform the competitive landscape in banking and finance. One danger for banks is that they will be caught off guard by the changes, unable to anticipate new forms of competition or to respond to them in an appropriate way. Reason for adoption of e-commerce Banks have various reasons for adoption of e-commerce. The main reason for the adoption of e-commerce by banks was to improve customer service, to cut down an operational cost, to keep up with industry trend, and lastly, to respond to customer demands. Other reasons include expanding bank market share, to increase bank profitability, to increase or create customer awareness of e-commerce services, to increase geographical reach, profitability and as a response to customer awareness on e-commerce services to increase customer awareness on bank products and to extend bank geographical reach. Now let us talk about the requirements and opportunities for payment system. Electronically based payment system have been in operation since the 1960s and have been expanding rapidly as well as growing in complexity. However, in most of the major industrialized countries, an inverse relationship exists between the volume and the number of transactions handled electronically. This has been due to the four related factors. Proprietary closed networks were developed by banks to handle large and increasingly internationally based payment system. Large value payments are increasingly associated with foreign exchange and global securities transaction thereby becoming diverse from underlying world trade large value payment system were not designed nor are they cost effective for small value payments paper based non automatic payment system remain an established part of accepted business practice for varying institutional reason thereby remaining in grant in the economic system the role of payment system the development of money has been inextricably associated with the growth of trade and commerce Monetary exchange and banking system developed rapidly as foreign and domestic trade expanded exponentially following the onset of the Industrial Revolution. International system of exchange. 
International trade has grown significantly in the post-war period and with it the associated monetary flows. More recently, deregulation and globalization have led to a spectacular growth in the value of non-trade related financial transactions. Payment and Settlement System A mixture of different payment systems has evolved to service the growing requirements of both trade and non-trade related commerce. There is a particularly sharp division between the payment and settlement system which are used for large value transfer and those which are available to settle smaller payments particularly on a cross-border basic. Large national payment system electronic payment system are not new and have been around in some form for several decades. The volume passing through wholesale systems are huge and it is useful to provide some indication of the sale of monetary flows which are involved. Payment system in India. Large payments, micro payments, online payments, credit card payments in general are what makes the world go round. The various payment systems are available in India today. Real-time gross settlement, RTGS, is run by the Reserve Bank of India, RBI. National Electronic Funds Transfer, NEFT, is also run by the RBI. NEFT is more retail in nature and includes large volume but not in value. Immediate Payment Service, IMPS, was created by the National Payments Corporation of India, NPCI. Rupe was created by... NPCI and is similar to other cards networks like Visa and MasterCard. Other enabled payment system AEPS was developed by NPCI in association with the UIDAI who is in charge of the other national identity program. Let us now discuss correspondent banking. A correspondent bank is a financial institution that acts as an agent for another bank providing services and products in an area the other bank does not operate in so its customers can assess things like wire transfer and international deposits. Correspondent Banking System Correspondent banking system is developed to remove the difficulties in unit banking system. It is the system under which unit banks are linked with bigger banks. The big correspondent banks are linked with still bigger banks in the financial centers. Let's now discuss Electronic Data Interchange, EDI. The EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange. The practice involves using computer technology to exchange information or data electronically between two organizations called trading partners. Technically, EDI is a set of standards that define common formats for the information so it can be exchanged in this way. How EDI works? The process for the most part EDI based transactions are really the same as their annual paper counterparts. The difference is that the EDI transactions are sent and received electronically as packets of data formulated according to EDI standards. The benefits of EDI? The benefits can be tremendous, lower cost by reducing the manual keying of data, handling of documents and other processes, one can potentially reduce the cost of labor and paper and reduce errors. High efficiency, sending and receiving EDI data happens in seconds and the information can be acted on immediately. Improved accuracy, one can reduce errors by using EDI because manual and duplicate entries eliminated. More supply chain visibility. With EDI, product sales data, product inventory status, demand forecast and other metrics can be shared with suppliers and their suppliers. Enhanced security. Thanks to numerous communication protocols addressing encryption and other security issues, critical business or personal data may be exchanged with higher levels of security via EDI than by any other means. Greater management information. Because EDI data is electronic data, one has a source of information to guide management decision or to mine for further analysis. As in the traditional marketplace, so too in cyberspace, diversity of payment methods allow customers to choose how they wish to pay. The following instruments are acceptable means of payment. Electronic checks, electronic credit cards, electronic cash, smart cards, person-to-person -person payments, electronic fund transfer EFT, e-wallets and purchasing cards. Few things to know about online payment systems. ACH payments. They are electronic credit and debit transfer allowing customers to make payments from their bank accounts for utilities, mortgage, loans and other types of bills. 
Merchant Account. It is a bank account that allows the customer to receive payments through credit or debit cards. Payment Gateway. It allows merchants to securely pass credit card information between the customer and the merchant and also between merchant and the payment processor. Payment Processor. It is the company that a merchant uses to handle credit card transaction. PCI Compliance. It is when a merchant or payment gateway sets their payment environment up in a way that meets the payment card industry data security standard PCI DSS. Credit card. Credit card is small plastic card with a unique number attached with an account. It has also a magnetic strip embedded in it which is used to read credit card via card readers. Following are the actors in the credit card system. The customer, the merchant, the payment gateway, the acquiring bank's processor, the credit card interchange, the customer credit card issuer, the merchant's acquiring bank. Debit card. Debit card like credit card is a small plastic card with a unique number mapped with the bank account number. It is required to have a bank account before getting a debit card from the bank. Smart card. Smart card is again similar to credit card and debit card in appearance but it has a small microprocessor chip embedded in it. It has a capacity to store customer work related or personal information. E-money. E-money transaction refer to a situation where payment is done over the network and amount gets transferred from one financial body to another financial body without any involvement of a middleman. E-money transactions are faster, convenient and save a lot of time. Electronic fund transfer. It is a very popular electronic payment method to transfer money from one bank account to another bank account. Accounts can be in same bank or different bank. Fund transfer can be done using ATM, automated teller machine or using computer. An ATM is a computerized machine designed to dispense cash to bank customers without need of human interaction. The ATM can also take deposit, transfer money between banks accounts and provide other basic financial services. It is a computerized telecommunication device that provides a bank clients with access to financial transactions from a public space without the need for a visiting the bank branch. Banks had always managed money and over the years, they want their customers to be served in a better and faster way. This need led to the invention of the ATM. It was in the 1960s when the idea transformed into a working model and was termed Bankograph. It was installed at the Citibank New York, but it was never accepted by the public. The Barclays Bank in London installed the first ATM machine in 1967, and this invention was credited to Sir John Shepard Barron. As you can see, this is an ATM machine which you could see outside a bank or any public place. The ATM user is prompted using a display screen. The keypad lets the user tell the bank what kind of transaction is required. The heart of an ATM machine is the safe and cash dispensing mechanism. The entire bottom portion of most small ATMs is a safe that contains the cash. The deposit slot here allows the user to deposit cash along with the transaction details. And the card reader captures the account information stored on the magnetic stripe on the back of an ATM debit or credit card. The host processor uses this information to route the transaction to the cardholder's bank. Right next to the card reader, we have the different types of cards that are accepted by this card reader. And the different types usually refer to the different host processors that are used in the transaction. The receipt printer provides a paper receipt of the transaction at the user's request. The user interacts with all of these components of an ATM machine to carry out the transaction successfully. We start the transaction by inserting the ATM card into the card reader. And once the card has been accepted by the ATM machine, the user is prompted to enter the PIN. Please ensure you cover the keypad while you enter the PIN to prevent shoulder surfing and ensure that you have entered four digits of the PIN number. We are prompted to press enter when we finish entering our PIN number. Once the PIN number has been validated, this machine provides us with six different types of transactions. User may select any one of these transactions. This machine provides us with four different money transaction options. The first the balance, balance in cash, cash withdrawal without receipt, and cash withdrawal with receipt. 
and over here we have the pin services and the mobile phone top-up you may select any one of the options here and let's go for cash withdrawal without receipt and uh, we are prompted to enter the amount I'm entering an amount of 10 pounds we are also prompted to choose from a list of various options which displays amounts ranging from 10 to 50 and 80, 100 or 200 pounds. Let us go ahead and choose the first option of 10 pounds. The user is now requested to remove the card from the machine. Only then is the cash dispensed by the cash dispenser. And once we have removed the card from the machine, the cash is dispensed by the cash dispenser. The receipt printer remains inactive since we opted to withdraw cash without receipt. This is just one of the transactions that are being provided by any ATM all over the world today. Now let's take a look at the front of a typical debit card. First we have the issuing bank logo and then we have the EMV chip and the unique card number which followed by the expiration date and the issue date, the cardholder's name and the different account information along with the card brand. The magnetic stripe sometimes called a max strip is read by physical contact and swiping past a reading head. The signature strip holds the cardholder's signature. The card is invalid without a valid signature. Then we have the card verification value, a hologram, which proves the authenticity of the card. Online electronic payments are not tantamount to electronic payments. In the emergence of e-commerce, credit cards have long been represented by electronic means of payment, credit cards in shopping malls, and online electronic payments. Online payments, also known as electronic currency, broadly speaking, refer to a transaction in the online exchange of funds. It is a network-based electronic financial, a business card transaction for all types of electronic tools and media, the electronic computer and communication technologies as a means, electronic data, binary data stored in the bank's computer system and through the computer network system in the form of the flow of electronic information transfer and payment. Common online electronic payment system. In online shopping, online electronic payment function is a key issue to ensure the consumers are fast and convenient. One has to ensure the safety and secrecy of the parties to a transaction, which requires a complete electronic trading system. Internet bank card payment system. Including online credit card, smart card, IC card, payment system are established in accordance with a standard set shopping and payment system. No security model. User complete control of the bank card business information, the transmission of messages without bank card security. Simple encrypted payment system model. The use of encryption technology to bank cards and other critical information and encrypted digital signature to confirm the authenticity of the message. SET, security electronic transaction. Model secure electronic transaction and refer to the set. In an open internet, is a realization of the international agreements and standard for secure electronic transaction. E-cash, electronic cash, internet payment system, e-cash is a form of data, the currency in circulation. There is electronic cash currency. It can be converted to cash, a series of encrypted numerical sequence number, and then use these sequences to show the value of all sizes. Electronic check, e-check, internet payment system, electronic check transfer payments, from paper check to the merits of using digital transmission to transfer money from one account to another account. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Electronic payment has revolutionized the business processing by reducing paperwork, transaction costs, labor costs. It is user friendly and less time consuming than manual processing, helps business organization to expand its market. E-commerce is a part of e-business and its goal is to generate profit through the various set of activities based on buying and selling principle. Actual banking transaction, however, still took place at the branch through the mail, by telephone or over the automated telemachine ATM network. 
Electronic bill presentment and collection services are being developed as an enhancement to the existing cash management and remittance processing services offered by banks to large companies that send out substantial volumes of recurring bills. The main reason for the adoption of e-commerce by banks was to improve customer service to cut down on operational costs to keep up with industry trend and lastly to respond to customers' demand.